Hey guys, your casual gamer here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Nintendo Switch emulator Ryu Jinx on PC. Let's head on over to ryujinx.org. The link to this page is in the description below. Once you're here, go ahead and click on Get Started. This emulator is also available for Linux and Mac, but I'm going to be downloading for Windows. You're gonna need this program here, 7-Zip, to extract the emulator, so if you don't already have it installed on your PC, the link to this page is also in the description below. Okay, so here's the Ryu Jinx compressed file on my desktop. Now we're gonna use 7-Zip to extract it. All you wanna do is right click on the file, go to show more options, 7-Zip, and extract to Ryu Jinx. It's going to create a new folder containing all of your extracted files. We no longer need the zip folder, so let's right click on that and delete it. Also, there will be two more files that you need to get this emulator up and running. That will be your keys and your updated firmware. Now, I cannot tell you where to get these files. Just know that you can go to Google and search for them, or you can check out my Patreon page, and I'm pretty sure I have a video there that will help you with this. Link in the description. Now you will have to extract your keys file, but not the firmware file. So let's go ahead and extract our keys. And we're just gonna extract here and delete the zip folder. Now, if we check this folder inside, you will find your prod keys and your title keys. Now let's go ahead and open the emulator and that will be this file right here. Now the first thing we're going to do is install those keys that we just extracted. So let's go up to file, open Ryu Jinx folder, then go to system. And inside of this folder, you're already going to see some prod keys and title keys. You want to go ahead and delete these files. And we're going to drag in our product keys and title keys that we extracted. And as the recording of this video, the latest title and prod keys is version 17.0.0. Now we're gonna install our updated firmware file. Let's go up to tools, install firmware, install firmware from XCI or zip. Go ahead and locate that file. I have it on my desktop. Here it is right here, firmware 17.0.0, open. Install firmware, yes. And guys, remember, the firmware file does not have to be extracted. Successfully installed, okay. Now let's go up to Options and Settings. Go over to Input. And this is where we can map our controller out. Now the controllers I have tested with this emulator is an Xbox One controller, an Xbox Series controller, and an actual Nintendo Switch Pro controller. And all three controllers work. The controller I will be using is an actual Switch Pro controller. And also, make sure enable dock mode is checked. And we're going to go down to player one, configure. Now, if you are using a Nintendo Switch Pro controller as I am, make sure you are on Switch Pro controller. I also have my Xbox Series controller connected to my PC. So if I wanted to set that up, then I will select Xbox Series controller. Over here next to controller type, you can also map this out to Joy-Cons, but since I am actually using a Pro Controller, we're gonna leave it on Pro Controller. And the great thing about this emulator letting you use a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller is that you don't have to map your controller out. All of your buttons are already set up. But if you were to use that Xbox controller, you would have to change some things around, such as your A button, you would click in this box, and then you will select what button you will want to be the A button, which will be your B button on an Xbox controller. Click in the box next to B button, and on your Xbox controller, it's going to be the A button. And just repeat that for whatever other buttons you need to change. Once you are done mapping out your controller, go up to Add, and enter a profile name so it saves your actual mapping. I'm just going to call it P1, okay? And then go ahead and hit Save. And if you have a second controller attached to your PC, go ahead and repeat that same thing for player two, three, or four. Back up to the top, and let's go over to graphics. Now I'm gonna leave everything here on the default settings, but if you are having performance issues, such as your game is lagging, then you may wanna come back here and change your graphics back in from Vulkan to OpenGL. Now I don't recommend using OpenGL unless you have some really old specs in your PC because Vulkan will give you the best performance. 
So try Vulkan, see how it goes, then make the switch. Make sure your preferred GPU is actually using your graphics card and not your integrated graphics. Under resolution scale, you can bump the graphics all the way up to 4K, that would be four times. And the way this works is that the graphics settings you are seeing on the left will be on handheld mode and the graphics you're seeing on the right will be on dock mode. So since I'm using a 1080p monitor, I'm just gonna stick with native. If you make any changes in here, go ahead and click on apply and save. Okay, now let's add our games to the emulator. I have a folder on my desktop that I renamed Switch Games, and this folder contains five games. Three games have been extracted, two have it. And the format you want to have your Switch ROMs in to be playable are NSP files and XCI files. So your Switch ROMs will be in a compressed format, and to extract them, we can use Crash Bandicoot 4. You want to right click on it, show more options, and we're going to use 7-zip, and we're just going to extract it here. And there we are, Crash Bandicoot 4 is now a XCI file. Delete the zip folder. Okay, back over to the emulator. Let's go up to Options, Settings. Under Game Directories, you wanna hit Add. Now go ahead and locate your folder that contains your Switch ROMs, and then hit Add. You should now see that folder showing under your game directories. Click that directory and hit Apply and you will see your games added to the emulator. Now, if you have any DLC files or update files for a particular game, all you wanna do is right click on that game and go to manage title updates or manage DLC. I actually have an update for this game, so I'm gonna manage title updates, click on add, locate wherever that update file is, here it is right here. Now, before I apply this, as you see, version 1.3.2 and the version that is currently loaded into the emulator is version 1.0.0. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save. And as you see, that version just updated. And if I was to upload some DLC onto Pokemon Scarlet, I would do it the same exact way. And now we can go ahead and load up a game. And for anyone who wants to see a compatibility list of what games are playable and which games aren't, I will leave a link to this page in the description below. Now let's load up. Crash Bandicoot 4. Now once you load up a game, you will be able to see at the bottom if you are playing in docked mode or handheld mode, make sure this is on docked so you are getting that full resolution, in my case, 1080p. If this was changed to handheld, then it would be 720p. And if you wanna go full screen, you wanna come up here to options and enter full screen. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like. And if you need any more help getting this emulator set up, then visit my Patreon page where I will have some very helpful videos. Hopefully, I will catch you guys in the next one.